Hello world, welcome back to another TJCTF 2025 write-up video. In this video, we'll be walking through various forensic challenges from the CTF. Let's get into it. We're going to start off with hidden message. I found this suspicious image file on my computer. Can you help me figure out what's hidden inside? All right, so go ahead and download the suspicious PNG image. I have it here in my Kali box. If we take a look at the image, we can see that there's nothing interesting at surface level. So what we're going to do is run zsteg on the image. And in the first LSB shift that it extracts for us here, we can see our flag. Steganography is fun. So we'll copy that, paste it into our flag submission, and submit. All right, let's move on to deep layers. Not everything ends where it seems to. All right, you're going to want to download the child.png image. I'm going to go ahead and navigate to it in my Kali box. If we take a look at the image, it appears to be a single pixel here, and it appears to be a transparent pixel as well. Let's close that. Let's run Benwalk on the image. We can see that there's a zip archive embedded within the image. We're going to run foremost to extract that archive from the image. We have an output directory. If we navigate into that output directory, we see we have a PNG folder and a zip folder. The PNG folder is just going to have our original image. The zip folder is going to have that zip file that we saw in Binwalk. So we're going to navigate to our zip folder here. We can see that we only have one zip file in here, even though Binwalk told us that there is another zip file called secret.gz that was listed up here, which is probably what's embedded within our zip archive. If we try to unzip this, we see that there's a password. Well, we got to go find the password. So we're going to navigate back out to where our PNG image is, and we're going to run exif tool on the PNG. We can see that there's a password header here with a base64 string. We're going to decode that base64 string. And we have our password for the zip file right here, polyglot password. So we'll copy that, and we're going to navigate back into our zip directory that has our password protected zip file. And we're going to try to re-unzip it. And then we're going to submit that password. I'm just going to paste it in. It says extracting secret.gz. Now you can gun zip this gz file, but it's easier to just come back to Windows, go to our zip directory here, navigate into the gz file, and our flag ends up being the file name of the file that's in here, and it has a size of zero. So it's literally just an empty file. We're going to copy this out to here, and then we're going to copy the flag. And our flag ended up being polyglot rabbit hole. So we're going to take that flag and paste it in here. I already solved it earlier because I didn't know if this was a red herring or not. And click submit. Let's move on to footprint. The folder used to hold some important files, including one with the flag as its name. Unfortunately, all the files were deleted. Can you piece together the flag from what's left behind? All right, first you're obviously going to want to download this files.zip file. And once you've done that, you're going to get this files directory right here. If we navigate into the files directory and we do ls, we see that there's nothing there. Well, let's see if there's any hidden directories. We can do that with the A flag, and I'm going to do L to see the permissions as well and other information. I actually need to spell it right we can see that there's a .ds store file. A .ds store file is a Mac file that holds file information. If we were to cat that file out, it's just going to look like a bunch of gibberish. But maybe there's a way to actually parse this file out so that we can make it more readable for us. That being said, if I go at one directory, you're going to notice that if I list all the directories here, I have another directory here called .ds store-parser. That's going to be the tool that we use to parse the DS store file. Now you can Google a DS store parser online, and there's plenty of GitHub repos and projects that will allow you to do this. The one I ended up using is right here by Hanwin Zhu, and this is how you run it right here. 
you just do python3 parse.py and then you pass in the ds store file. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to navigate into our ds store parser here. And I'll ls. You're going to see parse.py right here. We're going to run python parse.py and then we're going to go to our parent directory files slash dot ds store which is the file that we want to look at. Then we're going to press enter to run it. And you're going to see a listing of all the files that were originally in this directory before they got removed. Now they obviously look like a bunch of base64 strings. So we're going to go ahead and copy all these out. And we're going to attempt to decode all of them. But first we need to clean this up. So let's open up CyberChef. Let's paste that in as input. We're going to do a find and replace. Make sure to select regex here. It's selected by default. And we're going to want all these base64 strings on separate lines. So we're going to start our regex pattern with backslash s to represent white space, which is this part right here. Then we're going to do icon and then dot star to get the rest of the line. And then we're going to go ahead and also remove new lines as well. That way we can get them all nice and neat without extra new lines in between. Then we're going to want to copy this and we're going to open up a base64 decoder. The reason why I'm not doing it here is because we'd have to add an extra operation to get it to loop back and do multi-line base64 decoding. It's much easier to go to this base64decode.org link right here because what we can do is paste that here and we can select this decode each line separately, press decode. Now you're still going to get what looks to be gibberish. What you're going to want to do is look for the flag format. And you're going to find the beginning of the flag format right here. So we'll go ahead and copy that and paste it into our flag submission here to keep track of it. Now we need to find the other half of the flag. Well, that's in here as well. Let's look for the ending curly brace. We can see our first hit here is the rest of our flag. Paste that there. So our flag ends up being DS store is useful. And we'll submit that. Let's move on to album cover. I heard there's a cool Easter egg in the new TJCSC album cover. So you have an ink.py and an album cover.png. Let's go ahead and take a look at what those files look like. Just navigate to wherever you have them downloaded. Let's take a look at album cover. It looks like a bunch of nonsense. Let's look at ink.py. And as you can see here, the general gist of this code is basically taking an original flag WAV file and then encoding it in some way into a PNG image. So we need to reverse this code in order to get the original WAV file back so that we can get our flag. Well, if you don't know how to do this, you can easily just go to ChatGPT like I did. And as you can see here, I was trying to figure out how to do it. So I asked it first, how do I convert a wave that got converted to a PNG back to a WAV file? And then you can read all this if you want to. And it even gives me some code, like a general template on how to do it. Then if I scroll down, I actually gave it the ink.py script as well as the image. And I essentially asked it, how can I get the flag by taking the script and deriving the original flag WAV file that got encrypted into the album cover PNG image. So if I scroll down further, it breaks down what the ink.py script does, and then it gives me a script that reverses it. Again, you can mimic this however you want to in ChatGPT. It'll more than likely give you something you can use to work with in order to get the original WAV file. Now, if I open up the decode script as well in VS Code, and I set this to be side by side with the encrypt script, we can actually see how the decrypt script is literally the reverse of the algorithm used in the encrypt script. So in all honesty, you might be able to just play around with it and reverse it just based on how they do it here. But we went with a simpler, more efficient route, which is uh, allowing ChatGPT to assist us with this, which isn't as intuitive, but for beginners, very useful. And now you can understand how it's reversed by looking at them side by side. That being said, let's try running our DCPY script. I'm going to go to my Kali box to do that. Uh, 
I need to run it with Python since I didn't put the header. And you should get this recovered flag.wav file now. So now what we're going to do is we're going to minimize all this and we're going to open up Sonic Visualizer. We're going to drag our recovered flag wave file into Sonic Visualizer like so. We're going to add a spectrogram layer to it. And if you scroll in, you can actually see our flag. It says, this Easter egg is pretty cool. So that's our flag. So we're going to submit that. This Easter egg is pretty cool. Submit that. Let's move on to the final forensics challenge that I solved, packet palette. Someone tried to reinvent USB over IP poorly. Can you sift through their knockoff protocol? Okay, so for this one, you wanna download this pcapng file. I have it right here. Just open that up in Wireshark. And you're going to notice it's a pretty small packet capture. But the interesting thing to note is that you're going to see this USB-I header. And then you're going to see what looks to be a PNG image. We have raw data bytes here. And we have a TCP payload representing the same thing. We're going to want to use the TCP payload as the filter for this. Because when we filter all the bytes out, if you just do the data, it's going to miss the trailer of the PNG image. So make sure to use your TCP payload as your filter when you're extracting the bytes out. And you'll see what I mean by that here in a second. So if you click through these packets, you're going to notice that same USB-I header, right? And eventually you're going to get to the bottom here. This is a retransmission. And you're going to have your trailer right there. So make sure you do TCP payload because as you can see here, that data header does not show up in the TCP retransmission here. That being said, how do we parse this data out? Well, we're going to go to my terminal here. And we're going to navigate to our challenge directory. And we're going to run tshark on our file. We want to do tshark, tac r, pass in the file name. And then you're going to want to do tac t fields and then tack e tcp.payload. The way you figure out this header here is you can simply do right click, apply as filter, selected. And if you scroll to the beginning of the search bar up here, you can see what the filter applied looks like. And it's tcp.payload. We're gonna press enter and you're gonna get what looks to be a bunch of hex. Copy this hex out to a separate file. I'm just going to run Notepad++ to do this. Now you're going to see all our input line by line. I have word wrap turned off so it doesn't give us any extra new lines that we don't care about. And now we got to figure out where the good data is. It's pretty clear that there's a header for each of these packets, which is their attempt at, I'm guessing, sequencing and organizing the packet bytes as they come through. And we can very easily figure out what the full header is by going back to our pcat file. Let's clear our filter here. Let's go to the first packet where we saw our PNG header. And everything up to and excluding this 89 right here is going to represent the header bytes of this TCP payload, which means we need to remove those to get our raw data. Otherwise, our PNG image is going to end up corrupted. And the reason I know that our actual data starts there is because the PNG header starts with 8950-4E47. The 89 represents some little weird unreadable character, and then PNG is obviously just normal readable bytes. So that being said, since our data, as we can see here, starts right here with the PNG header, we can get rid of this first one, and we can get rid of this last one, because those represent the beginning of the USB over IP segment and the end of the USB IP segment. So we don't need those. Now we just need to see what inconsistencies lie within the packet header. That way we can just get rid of all of them at once. As you can see in the middle of the packet header here, you can see that it's sequencing upwards. One, two, three, four, five, and so on and so forth until we get down to here. 
And then you'll notice that there's a slight distinction. Most of these are F4s, but on the bottom one here, it's a 7.7. That's likely due to the retransmission. This is a different packet, so it might have a different ending byte there due to it being a retransmission. But in any case, we can account for that very easily. What we're going to do is we're going to highlight the section that we want to replace. Do Control H for find and replace, or you can click it from up here. And let me actually do a different one that's a little bit easier to look at that actually has some numbers in the middle since that starts at zero. Let's do this packet right here. So this is the changing value right here. So we'll replace that with two dots. Make sure you have regular expression selected and we'll replace the last two bytes with two dots. And that's going to match all of our headers here. As you can see, as I cycle through all of them, it's only hiding those in particular. We're going to select replace all. And then we're going to want to also replace all the new lines since we don't want new line bytes showing up where they're not needed. It'll mess up the image. This should all be one continuous line of bytes. So replace all. For whatever reason, it's not finding the new lines. So we're going to grab this whole chunk of data and we're going to take it over to CyberChef. We're going to look for find and replace. And let's look for new lines. It looks like it was able to pick up on the new lines there. I don't know what was going on with Notepad++. This was working when I solved the challenge. So that's very weird. But not to worry, there's multiple avenues to do this. So we're going to copy this output here. And we're going to paste it into HXD. We'll do new file. Paste the hex right here in this side. Don't paste it on this side. Paste it here. Then we're going to do control S and we're going to save this as flag.png. Save. We're going to open up our directory here, open up our flag image, and there's our flag. USB IP flag inside a protocol. We can try running Tesseract on this to extract the text from the image. So we'll navigate into our packet palette and we will run Tesseract on our flag.png, we'll call it flag. We'll cat the flag.txt file out. And it looks like it was successfully able to extract the text for us, so we wouldn't have to type it all out. So we'll copy that. Make sure that it compares to what we have here. It looks like it mistook the last zero for an O. So we'll fix that when we put it into our flag submission. So let's go to our flag submission here. Paste that in, replace the O with a zero, click submit, and there we go. And that wraps it up for all the forensics challenges I was able to solve in this CTF. So if you enjoyed the video, drop a like and subscribe to the channel to show your support. Turn on post notifications to get regular injections of cyber content directly into your feed. Check out our Patreon, join our Discord, and follow us on Twitter. Links in the description box down below. And leave any feedback or questions in the comments section down below. This is Almond Milk. Thanks for watching. Goodbye, world.